Howdy folks, it seems like the start of November is going to be jam-packed with new announcements. If you didn't see, I just did a video talking about the Canon R6 Mark II, finished that one and then saw that Nikon have just announced the new Nikkor Z 600mm f4 lens with a built-in TC. It's Looks pretty cool, but I have to say some of the things that really made the 400 and 800 jump off the page, I'm not sure if we're getting the full benefit on that one, so let's talk it through. Before I jump into it, two things to let you know, and this is as I record this on the 2nd of November 2022, B&H Photo now have Z9s in stock, ready to buy, ready to ship with no waiting list. So if you've been thinking about it, but you don't want to deal with waiting lists, now is your time. I'll have a link below where you can check that one out. We've been using two of them since Christmas last year, and they really are outstanding. If you are in the system, also check out my setup guide that takes you through everything all the way up to the latest firmware on that guide. Second thing, they're not sponsoring this video, but if you saw it, I recently did a video on the Hapi Travel Tripod. It's really fantastic. It's 1.3, 1.4 kilos. It's literally less than half the price of the carbon fiber travel tripod I've been using for the last few years, and also less than half the price of the kind of other ones that it's competing against in this market. It's currently up on Kickstarter till the middle of November. I'll pop a card above and be uh, link below where you can see my full video going through all the things you want to think about on this one in terms of it being a travel tripod specifically, but also the Kickstarter issues that are involved. Now, let's take a look at this 600 mil lens. Now, if we just have a look at this table I put together at B&H Photo, so this has, from left to right, the 600f4 EFL lens that was the latest 600f4 for Nikon F mount. Then it has this new one, which is the Z with the built-in TC. And then we've got the new 800 and the new 400 with TC that are for the Z mount as well. First thing that really jumps out at you is this one is significantly more expensive. Yes, there's a few years between the previous generation and this one, but if you take a look at the 400 28, which is already an extremely expensive and amazingly capable lens, this one is, what are we talking, another $1,500 on top of that one, or about $3,200 more expensive, or about 20, 25% more expensive than the one that it is replacing. Now, it looks like it's got all of their latest technology in there. They're saying that it is by far their best optical 600 mil lens that they've ever made. Interesting to see it's far more complex than the old one, which was 16 elements in 12 groups. This one is 26 elements in 20 groups. But then that is on par with like the 400 mil and it performs just beautifully. This idea that more elements is going to yield potentially a less crisp image just isn't the case. And especially lenses at the longer or the wider ends, you need more tech in there basically to correct for aberrations. But one thing to look at here, it is 1.2 pounds lighter than the previous generation but it's still 0.7 pounds heavier than the 400 mil lens and significantly heavier, like two full pounds more than the 800 mil. Now, having said that, so there are some issues that may give you a little bit of pause that it's not just hands down going to be the best obvious answer for everyone. You know, using the FTC Mark II adapter onto something like a Z9, the old lenses are working just phenomenally well. If you haven't seen that, I've done all kinds of videos testing different lenses. They're really performing great. So if you're using the 600 F4 E, you can probably get away with that for some time or, you know, forever. Unfortunately, I didn't know this one was coming. Nikon have been really good at letting me know when things are coming and getting early access so that I can have a hands-on to give you my thoughts when it first is announced. Unfortunately, not this time around, so I can only give you my on the paper kind of feedback. Now, one interesting thing that is kind of cute, um, they've named the new autofocus of this one, Suki Swift VCM. Suki Swift just sounds so quaint and lovely. They're saying that it's the highest, the most advanced technology they've put into any Nikkor lens that it's going to mean the fastest autofocus of any lens in the market. And if that's really true, if it's optically as good or better than the 400 plus TC, 
and it focuses faster than that, then I think actually that price is going to be justified. You have to keep in mind, we think of like a 2.8 and a 400-2.8, it's such a chonk, giant lens. But actually, when you talk about aperture to focal length, 600 f4 is bigger. It requires mathematically bigger elements to achieve than a 400-2.8. For example, if you put a 1.4 teleconverter onto a 400-2.8, it's going to become a 560 mil f4 compared to a 600 f4. So then when you put a 1.4 teleconverter onto this, it becomes an 860 mil 5.6, which gets you beyond the 800 mil lens. So for people who are shooting, you know, this is really going to be, I think, more wildlife and birds, sorry, yeah, wildlife, birds, and maybe some sports, it's going to be a great flexible option because you can add the one for internal teleconverter, and then you can add an extra one, four, or two times on the outside, getting you up to like 1200 something, I know, up to 1600, something like that, uh, focal length, and still be able to get great autofocus with the Zen 9. Generally, they do even up to like F13, F16. Whereas a 400 is going to be more flexible. You can shoot a lot of things at 400, and then with the internal TC, you get up to 560, which is short of this one. Now, I'm sure you know if this lens is suitable for what you shoot. You're not going to just drop 15 or $16,000 on a whim without even knowing that. But this is really going to be a niche lens. One thing I would say, and I'm not in encouraging you to buy things you don't need, but if you are intending to get one, you probably want to get your order in soon. If we've seen anything from the long lenses that Nikon have been bringing out, the more high-end ones still have really long waiting lists and people who order them on day one seem to get them months before other people's deliveries come through in round two, three, four as production ramps up. I would love to know your thoughts. What do you think? I'm in two minds about it, about Nikon building out the long lens range so exhaustively in the Z range. We've got the 70 to 200, the 100 to 400, we've got the 400, two 400s, the 600, the 800, all of these long lenses that are great for professionals, sports people, wildlife shooters, but there's still some obvious gaps in the under 200 mil range, like a 105, a fast 85, a fast 35. There's, you know, in the higher end prime ranges that portrait photographers, street photographers, lifestyle photographers might be looking for, there's far fewer options than there are for the really long lenses. Now, I, as a professional and as someone who does shoot wildlife and birds when I'm able to, having those options, I really love it. But I'm kind of on the other side as well, where I'm shooting lots and lots of portraiture and I'm just aching for an 85 or 105 or 135 that would round out my kit really well. So let me know your thoughts on that one. If we've got a minute, let me just tell you a little bit more about this guy. I Just the top line couple of things on it. When you have a travel tripod, so often the center column is just like as thin as a pencil and that's what's holding up your ball head. Because they tend to not go up to six foot tall unless you extend the center column, this one has a triple column, which in my video you can see it does recover from bumps and stuff a lot better than a traditional column. But abracadabra, this guy also comes out and then it becomes its own tabletop tripod with legs that you can adjust the angle on. You can get a second head if you want on the Kickstarter, so you have one on each. Both this head and this one both have bubble levels in them. It's a pretty great design and literally half the price, as I said, of the other one that I've been using and the one that's kind of most famous on the market. That they did sponsor my first video, they're not sponsoring this one, but it's so good I've actually bought a pair of them for us now on my own dime. So I wanna let you know because the Kickstarter's only up for another week or so. So check it out, let me know your thoughts on the new 600 mil and Nikon's approach on the range overall. And as soon as I can get that 600 in to actually test out, I will let you know. I've already contacted my rep at Nikon to try and get one as soon as possible. Cheers guys.